Today on Always Hungry, we're gonna be making one of my favorite meals of all time, a ribeye steak with a Bernays sauce. Let's go. So we have an absolute monster of a ribeye steak here. It's 70 ounces. It's massive, Canadian Angus Triple A. We have all the mise en place for the Bernays sauce here. And we're gonna be serving this with a beautiful side dish of oven baked potatoes. So just look at this monster here. The fat cap is beautiful. We have a nice marble here. Always a crowd favorite, the ribeye steak. So first thing first, we're gonna start with the baked potatoes. Uh, very easy, you can peel those if you want. I like to leave the skin on because it's full of flavor. Uh, up to you. So just cut those in nice wedges. Like this, like this, like this. So about eight pieces per potato, depending on the size. So now that we're done cutting all the potatoes, we're gonna swing those in the bowl here and we're gonna season them. You can also do it on a tray, but I feel like you get a, a nicer uh, all around seasoning when you do it in a bowl before putting them on a tray. Oh, we have a Lucy, we have a Lucy. Oh, there you go. So to this, we're gonna add three stems of rosemary. We're just gonna chop it off uh, roughly before we put it in there. So take off the stems, just like this. Easy peasy. So just like this, in a little, in a little pile, you can just roughly chop it. So rosemary goes in the bowl. Uh, and to this, we're gonna add a bit of garlic. I'm probably gonna use uh, Let's say like five garlic cloves. And we're just gonna smash those and add them to the bowl. So afterwards, it's easy to just discard. And I'm gonna give all the flavor they need to give to our potatoes. I'll do six. I'll do six cloves. And we're just gonna smash those. Just smash like this. There you go. Smashy smasher. And then we can just put this in the bowl like this. We're also gonna add some dried oregano. So I have the fresh bundle here, some mountain oregano. We're just gonna kind of like go like this on top. The bowl, there you go. Smells already amazing. Next step, I'm gonna add some paprika, about uh, one tablespoon of paprika, right in there. Next, we're gonna season generously because the best friend of the potato is the salt. Very true. Do two big pinches of freshly cracked peppercorn favorite olive oil. Oh yeah, that sound. That should do it. And now it's gonna be tossing time. There you go. Tossy, tossy. Make sure you always wear a white shirt when doing this for extra points. I think I did pretty good. Did I do good? I did good, there you go. So you're gonna need a baking sheet and a cooking rack. You can also just do it on the baking sheet if you don't have the rack, that's totally fine. But it gets nicer and crispier with this on. So we're gonna take our time and line them up one by one. You know, they deserve all the love. It's not a steak, but definitely need some, uh, some love and care. So take your time, line them up properly. And you can just use that uh, that extra oil in your bowl to kind of like drizzle some more on top so they're all nicely coated with this beautiful garlic and herb and paprika oil. There you go. These look, these are looking very sexy. I gotta say so myself. So we're gonna send the potatoes in the oven. It's preheated on 425 Fahrenheit. They should go in there for 25 minutes. Then we're gonna flip them halfway and keep it cooking for another 25 minutes. and. Uh, yeah, should be delicious. Okay, so next step, we're gonna be taking care of the Bernays sauce. It's this beautiful French classic sauce that's always usually served with steak and fries. Let's get into it. So we have three quarters of a cup of butter right in here. We're gonna start this on low heat. And we're gonna melt this slowly. And once it's all melted, we're gonna skim off 
the impurities and we're going to be left with a beautiful clarified butter. Uh, so for the white wine, you can also keep it in the fridge or in the snow. I like to call this the Canadian freezer. Oh yeah! It's not even cold. Oh. So we're going to need half a cup of wine. Half a cup, half a cup. Maybe a bit more, a bit less. Doesn't really matter to be honest. There you go, half a cup in the pot. And we also have a quarter cup of white wine vinegar. There you go. So we're gonna add three sprigs of fresh tarragon in there. So we're gonna add two shallots to the reduction. We're just gonna like finely dice those. So you can extract the maximum flavor out of each shallot. So cut in half. Whoa. <laughs> so we're just gonna finely dice the shallots like this. Go. Like this. Okay, so the clarified butter is pretty much good to go. As you can see here, we have all the skim at the top. With a spoon or a little, you can just kind of scoop out all the impurities of the butter and we'll be left with the good stuff. So just like this. So we have our clarified butter now. We're going to transfer this to a, a little container like this. There you go. And at the end, there's some white stuff at the bottom. That's like the buttermilk. This you can leave out. So when you're here, just leave the rest and then you're good to go. You have a beautiful clarified butter. We can keep it on the side for now. And there you go. So the funny dye shallots goes in the pot here. There you go. And we're also gonna add some black peppercorn. So I have here about uh, 10 black peppercorn, right in there. And we can now put this on the stove and we're gonna reduce this to almost nothing. So our reduction is now boiling. We're gonna bring it down to a low simmer and reduce it down to almost nothing. And what's left, we're gonna strain this and that's gonna be the base of our Bearnais sauce. All right, so it's been 25 minutes. Let's check on our potatoes. Woo! Beautiful. So we're gonna give those a nice little flippy flippy. A little flippy flipper. Wow, 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 wow. These are gonna be very delicious. I like to use the cooking rack because uh, it doesn't stick at the bottom of the pan, for one. And also, the fact that you have also oxygen coming from underneath, it's the potatoes from all sides and you get a crispier skin and a beautiful color, so. But if you don't have a cooking rack, the pan is totally fine too. All right, so these are gonna go back in the oven for another 25 minutes and they should come out crispy, golden and delish. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so, so our reduction is good to go. So we're just gonna strain this into a fine strainer. So as you can see, it's almost fully reduced in there. It's just a bit of liquid, which can be the base for our Béarnaise. So here and there, and you can really squeeze all the juice left in that shallot and tarragon, because it's packed with the flavor that we want in there. So like this, squeeze that up. Perfect, so you should be left with about this amount of liquid, not too much. And good to go. Okay, so now for the base of our Bernays sauce, we have the little reduction, uh, the, the strain reduction in there. We're also gonna add four egg yolks. Let's get cracking. Like this. There you go. That's one. Four egg yolks in there. So for this step, you're gonna need two things. You need a, a pot with water in there. We're gonna do a water bath, like you would do for a land ice. And um, we're gonna place the bowl on the pot here to do to create like a, also called the bain marie. And now we're gonna whisk our eggs. 
like this. And we're gonna incorporate the butter on the, on the heat. So the goal now is to get the egg yolks and the reduction nice, nice white and foamy. And once that's done, we can start incorporating our butter in there. So make sure you're whisking constantly because you're gonna cook your eggs and you have uh, some, uh, some scrambled eggs in your bayonets and you don't want that. So you see it's already starting to be, starting to be a little foamy. We're in a good direction, so just keep whisking. You can always take your bowl off the heat and back on the heat if you, start, if you think it's starting to be too hot. And make sure you always create the sides because that's gonna cook faster than the middle. All right, so now we can get the bowl off the stove for a second. You can turn that down as well. All right, so now we can start incorporating our butter in our yolk and vinegar mixture. So just like a mayo, you slowly, nice and slowly, be patient. It's gonna thicken up pretty fast. So just like this. You know you're fat when you're whisking and you can just tell your belly is just following the motion. So nice, go, go nice and slowly, make sure you don't put too much butter because it's gonna separate and then you're gonna be fucked and that sucks. Just start over, so nice and slowly. Back up a little bit, there you go, thank you. All right, so we're almost done with the butter and you can see the texture is beautiful. And that's it. So now that we're done incorporating the butter, we're gonna taste uh, the bell knife to make sure seasoning is good. Taste our sauce. You can always add a bit of pepper or salt. What I'm gonna do also is, what I like to do is add some fresh chopped tarragon right in the sauce. So we'll just take this off the stems here, like so. So it's gonna bring the nice little fresh side of the tarragon because you obviously have some in the reduction, but this is gonna bring a nice fresh herb vibe to the sauce. Can, I, can you say vibe in cooking? I don't know, it's a vibe. So we're gonna roughly chop this. Make sure you only have the leaves, not the stems. Take off you. Okay, so I just roll this in a nice tight little cigar, like this. Or blunt. And then we chop this finely. Now this can go in the bowl. Perfect. And we can also add some freshly cracked pepper to our bernaise. And some salt as well. There you go. Give this a little, a little mix. Wow, it's very, very nice. That's all you know, you did it right. Oh God, that's good. So if you're gonna make your sauce ahead of time, you can always leave it at room temperature or on the water bath at the very minimum to make sure your butter doesn't solidify. You can keep your sauce for a few hours this way. All right, so it's been 45 minutes in the oven. These should be perfect, good to go. Oh yeah, look at the color on these bad boys. Woo! Wow, nice and crunchy and tender in the middle. So I have to try it now, I'm gonna burn my face off. It's now time to take care of our beautiful prime ribeye steak. So first of all, uh, make sure you always leave it out at least 45 minutes before uh, you cook it, you want it to you want to bring it to uh, room temperature. So this one's been on the counter for uh, probably an hour now. So we're gonna season this generously with salt. And I also like to put a bit of olive oil to make sure the salt sticks um, on uh, all the surfaces like this. So olive oil first. And then we're gonna put, you could use fine salt or coarse salt. I'm gonna use this uh, the salt I have here, but whatever works. So keep in mind, it's a big steak, it's 70 ounces. So you need to be very generous with the salt. This, flip that over. More salt here and make sure you kind of rub it in there on all the sides, the fat too. Just like you're massaging your, 
your loved one, you know? Just think as, just think as is of a, it's a girlfriend, it's your boyfriend, you know? Your friend, and you just wanna rub it, give it some love, tell them you care about him, take, or her, you know? Yeah, just a little bit of love. She'll thank you later. There you go. That's good. Now the reason why I'm only putting salt on the steak before I cook it uh, and no black pepper is because when you expose your black pepper to a very high temperature, it might burn and become very bitter. So I like to put the pepper at the very end to get a nice fresh cracked pepper taste uh, for finishing. So just salt, olive oil or just even salt and that's it. I like to use a cast iron pan when I'm cooking big steaks like this because it holds the temperature very well. Um, and also it's gonna give us that nice crust that we're looking for. So cast iron pan is the way to go definitely uh, when cooking big steaks. So just make sure it's really nice and hot so you can get it like uh, preheated on medium for probably like even six, 10 minutes. And when it's like nice and smoking like this, we're gonna add a bit of olive oil. You can also uh, use a neutral oil. I pretty much use olive oil all the time because that's how I roll, but you do you. So there you go. Olive oil, just a little bit, and then our steak. What I like to do is to start it even on the fat cap like this. So careful against you like this, and then kind of press it down. There you go. And what that's gonna do is by starting with the fat cap first, all that delicious beef fat is gonna render out in the pan. So we're gonna be searing both sides in, in its own fat, so it's better than using oil for sure. I only use a little bit to start to make sure, uh, to give it like a bit of a head start, but definitely uh, start on the fat cap. And you don't have to go with the crazy smoking, like out of control temperature, because obviously with a big steak like this, you wanna take time to develop a nice, beautiful crust on all sides. So there's no point in like going full crazy with the heat, just keep it at a, at a high temperature, obviously, but if it's starting to smoke too much, lower your heat. All right, let's check on our fat cap. Oh my God, look at this color. That's gonna be very nice and crispy. And uh, it's good to render fat this way at the beginning. You wanna have these big pieces of like raw fat when you slice your steak. So now we can flip it, there we go. Beautiful. Let's check on our steak. Pretty good for a little flip. Woo! I mean, come on! Is that a nice sear or what? This camera, this camera. That's how you sear a steak. And then back on the other side. Beauty. Now that we're almost done searing our steak, it's only the right thing to do to give the steak the love it deserves. Me, we're gonna be basting our beautiful prime ribeye steak with some butter, some garlic, some fresh herbs. I have some fresh thyme here, some rosemary, even have a shallot here to give some extra flavor. So what we do is just uh, this garlic clove here. We're just gonna cut it in half like this. There you go. That's good. And same for a shallot, just in half like this. Perfect. Before we start basting our steak, I just wanna get some of the beef fat out of the pan here, like this. And actually, you can even kind of like uh, put it on the side for a sec and just give it like a nice little dry wipe. So just a quick dry, dry clean of the pan here, perfect. And then we can put our steak back in there. Perfect. So I'm gonna add a generous knob of butter, like this. We're gonna add some thyme. Oh, you hear that sound? The sound of making it. And then some rosemary. And the garlic. And the shallot. There you go. Ooh, the smell is already out of control. And now, we 
what we're gonna do is using a spoon, and I'll turn everything around here. There you go. So to make sure you can see what's going on, I'm gonna do it backward. We don't have a tough cam yet, so it's fine. We'll do it from this angle. I'm gonna bring your pan down this way. And then the butter here, I'm gonna bring it back on top of your steak. That's gonna give a nice, fresh butter flavor to your steak. And this is called basting. So we're just basting away. You can even like put your herbs out of the way. Ah, that was fucking hot. You can even put your herbs on top of the steak like this. All the good stuff. Shout out to let's go, why not? This, like this, like this. There you go. So now with the butter, you kind of just baste it like this for a bit. It's the first time I'm doing a revert butter basting. Maybe doing it on the side like this is better. There you go. It's kind of like, also it's very not uh, safe to throw hot butter at your, in, your, in your direction. But you know what? You gotta do it for the views, right? There you go. Oh wow, look at the color on that steak now. Woo. That's gonna keep your steak nice and juicy. You don't want a dry steak, so butter's gonna keep everything nice and beautiful. Like this, like this, like this. Again, if you're home, never do it like this. Do it against you for some obvious reasons. Okay. So we should be at a medium rare right now. Yeah, it's nice and bouncy. So we're gonna put the steak to rest. Whoa. Just look at that. Just look at that. Just sink that in. Just look at that. It's beautiful. I mean, if you don't get an emotion out of this, you're cold. You're cold hearted pretty much, yeah. All right, so the steak is gonna go here. A little resting tray and we're gonna do now is pour all the delicious butter right on top as a money shot baby you ready so all the good stuff right on top oh <laughs> there you go and now we can let this rest for at least six minutes usually the rule is uh Resting time should be as long as the cooking time, but you know, we still want to eat this thing hot, so we'll do six minutes and that should be good. And then we'll slice right into it. All right, potatoes are looking beautiful. Put these in a nice little side bowl like that. I don't know if it's gonna fit all in there, but we're gonna try anyways. Because we always try, you know? Mm -hmm. Can always try. And now, you know, because we're just crazy, we are Gonna top these up with a nice little Parmigiano Reggiano. Guess it just makes everything better, right? Oh wow. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for it's the steak slicing time. But first, we're gonna cut the meat off the bone here, so just kind of follow the bone, natural carve like this. Oh, why, 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 why? It's beautiful. And now, let's get slicing. So when you do ribeye, never cut it too thin. You wanna keep some decent slices because afterward, you wanna cut each part of your slices and have a bit of crust on every single bite. So there you go. Oh, mamma mia. I think we absolutely crushed it. Beautiful. Oh, mamma mia. Look at that. See that edge to edge? Edge to edge pink? That's how you do it. This is just beautiful. Woo-wee. Okay. Very happy with this. So now we transfer our steak onto a beautiful plate like this. And now we can kind of like lay it down to see the beautiful color of that steak. 
this. Look how juicy and tender that looks. Insane. Uh, I'm gonna place the bone right on the side like this. There you go, no waste. And now for the final part of this beautiful recipe, I'm gonna pour our precious Bernays sauce on our steak. Mamma mia. Oh, buddy. And now, my absolute favorite part of the video, it's tasting time. We'll start with a nice little potato. I'll dip it in the sauce because, you know, why not? Mmm. God. God damn, it's good. Mmm. Double dip. Double dip. Mmm. Oh. Okay, well, that's already very good. Now let's get down to the real business here. I'm gonna try this little steak. Oh, mamma mia. That's a big bite. That's a big bite. Okay. Oh, mamma mia. Ready? Ready? Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god, that was so good. I gotta try one more, just to make sure it's good. Out piece here. And we'll do a little dip in the sauce, because why not? There's never enough sauce. Mm -hmm. Wow. Classics are always good. And that's a wrap for Always Hungry. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, the steak with the Bearnaise, the beautiful potatoes. Please go hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, leave a like on the video, hit that little bell to make sure you don't miss the next video. It's been a pleasure. I hope to see you soon in the next video. Love you, love you. I'm out. See ya.